and what does it take to open innovation? The question to start with, let's understand what is open innovation. Open innovation, as all of you know, is about opening up the organization, opening up the processes for outsiders to help you in the innovation process. A large corporation wants to innovate, opens out itself, invites people into their R&D labs, open anybody, not asking you for credentials, you may be a customer, you may not be a customer, you may be a supplier, you may be a researcher, you may be somewhere across the industry, as she talked about, from some other industry, can you help me in a way? Open their boundaries. In the process, a traditional idea of open innovation is, I open now and I'm willing to listen from outside. It's not just outside in knowledge flow, it's also important to talk about inside out knowledge flow. Unless you tell them what you want to do, they will come and tell you everything. They will tell you that in Sagar University should create aerospace. Why are we not producing aeroplanes? Why is I am not producing shipping engineers? No, that's not our purpose. I need to define what I want to do. Therefore, there's also a critical piece of inside out knowledge flows. It's a, it's a marriage of inside out knowledge flows and outside in knowledge flows. Popular conversations is about large organizations need to listen to startups. It's also important the startups need to listen to large organizations. Customers also need to listen to large organizations because they have a mandate, they have stakeholders. So we need to marry both inside out and outside in knowledge flows. <coughs> Let's talk one by one. Outside in knowledge flows require four significant capabilities. Capability one, I need to select the right partners. A lot of times, you know, you have uh, intermediaries like IB Cap who are trying to find the right partners for you. Sometimes, it just happens serendipitously. Can we allow this for work with serendipitous discovery? Or is there a systematic way of searching, screening, selecting and engaging with the partners? A lot of times, pretty much like how matrimony happens. You don't just fall in love at the first time. Some people do, Bollywood does, but a lot of times, you also need to do go through the entire process of search screen select. So the search screen select will lead to engagement. If you don't do the search screen select, your engagement may not necessarily be right, it may not end up in a marriage. So we need to get this process right. The very important thing that uh, we also discover that large organization is mired at a lot of levels and bureaucracies, there's somebody in the organization who is willing to open in the way. The rest of the organization is not even willing. The rest of the organization says, who are these outsiders? How can they tell us what to do? How can they tell us how to do? The willingness and openness has to be our way. The third thing <coughs> is people are, I'm willing to listen. Okay, give me ideas. I'll take all the ideas. I have two years, year number one to input, year number two to output, with no processing in between. Organizations will collate ideas, don't know what to do. Right? Like in my mother tongue, they say that you, monk, you give a monkey uh, coconut, the monkey does not know what to do with the coconut. It's trying to peel it open like a banana, it can't do anything. It just keeps playing with the banana, with the coconut, does not know what to do with it. A lot of larger organizations, big corporations, know how to innovate internally. You give them ideas, they don't know how to integrate that internal, external ideas into their internal processes. So therefore, that's the capacity that I call as absorbed. The capacity, I need to have a coherent program of integrating outside knowledge into my internal processes. If you don't know how to do this, it's a coconut monkey story. The fourth one, I've integrated ideas, but I don't know how to make money out of it. End of the day, all these ideas need to be translated into products, services, processes, solutions. If it's not translating into product, services, and solutions, I may not end up making money. And then after a point in time, this was a nice thing, we had a nice, nice time together. Thank you very much, we are not making money in the processes. Flop. So therefore, four capabilities. Select screen, uh, search screen select, engage. Openness, grow the organization. Capability to integrate, capability to make money. If I flip the organization, inside out knowledge flows. How do I share what I have with others? I have a, I made a wonderful chip. I don't know where did this chip be used. I have great research happening in uh, corner of California. Uh, I don't know who will use this. A lot of times technologies, people have created large technologies, large organizations like Intel, create technologies but they don't know how to do this. I want to do inside out knowledge flows for applications to happen. 
the first thing that these organizations need to do is to be able to integrate <laughs> or engage with startups, engage with outsiders, engage with suppliers, customers at the pre-prototyping stage. Years of research have proven that if you start engaging with people at the prototyping stage or after prototyping, the amount of value that you generate is 10x smaller than when you engage with the outside world pre-prototyping. It takes a lot of guts. Before my prototype is ready, I need to open out, I need to listen to customers and suppliers. But if you did that, you would actually generate significantly high value. Internet ability to engage with firms pre prototype Very important is to be able to work with lead users. The academic research is separated open innovation and, the, and it's a small part of it is called lead users. Lead users are not your first users. Lead users are those users who are expert users. They could have actually done it themselves. They don't do it because they don't want to do it. These are lead users that are capable users. <coughs> they can, they could innovate it themselves. They could make it themselves, they are not doing it. Because it's not their domain. Think of a, somebody who is talking about healthcare analytics. The hospital has all the capabilities to hire a data scientist. They can do a lot of analysis on the health records. They are not doing it because they don't want to do it. Those are the lead users. You should be able to work with lead users. Working with lead users is not easy because the lead users have their own idiosyncrasies. If you, have, if you can share knowledge with lead users and be able to work with them, you can do wonderful inside out knowledge first. The third thing, which is a replica of exactly what I said that, this engagement should also be able to produce value. Generate value, integrate this sharing that you did with the lead users, integrate the sharing that you did with outsiders free prototyping to be able to make money. End of the day, there are hundreds of companies, I have written hundreds of cases where companies have done all of this, got lots of ideas, ideas are still sitting in the R&D lab, has not reached the production flow. So both inside out and outside in knowledge flows are important. What are the capabilities? There are five capabilities that I have to put them together. There is an ecosystem capability, I need to be able to find out where is the ecosystem, which ecosystem. I need to be able to work with the users and partners. I need to know how to ideate. Willingness to engage with the partners at the uh, prototyping stage. I need to have the absorptive capacity to be able to integrate internal knowledge flows with external knowledge. And lastly, I need to be able to appropriate value. What problems does it solve? It doesn't solve all your problems. You don't open innovate for everything. You only open innovate when you want to marry technology with markets. That's when you approach those ideas. You want to integrate novel technologies, what uh, she talked about as cross training. I have certain technologies, I know three applications, I don't know five other applications. I want to know that, know that I will do integration. Or, I want to be able to involve people, involve users and lead users early in the production stage because, because I don't want surprises tomorrow. I want to be able to reduce costs or I don't want to hit with surprises. These are the only three problems that open innovation can solve. If you want, if you're using open innovation to solve anything else, please stop doing it now. Four traps. Open innovation traps, you can get trapped in India. If people, this all this uh, big hype, no AI, OI, I was very surprised that AI and OI have come together. That's again another trap because you put OI along with another technology. Do you know exactly why are you doing OI? If you don't know why you are doing OI, open innovation, good thing to do, you lose your painting, you lose your IP if you don't know how to do it. It's like playing with fire. Please learn how to play with fire, fire before you start doing this. Are you right? Tapping into the right ecosystems. You may end up tapping into the wrong ecosystems. There are lots of companies who develop wonderful technologies and gave it in the wrong hands. Can you integrate knowledge flows? You will end up collecting lots of knowledge, startups, Customers, suppliers will start engaging with you and get dissolution very fast because you don't know how to generate value for them, generate value for yourself. Are you able to monetize this? If you're not able to do this, all your items at Open Innovation will be nice things to do. You can write new nice press releases. You will never be able to make money. Out. 